Hi, Vital. Firstly, a huge congratulations on the massive 110 point improvement to a 695 and congratulations on the perfect quant score. So thank you for taking out the time today. Uh, so Vital, what was your first reaction when you saw that 695 pop up on the screen? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Ava. Uh, I was really like happy seeing the 695 score, especially from uh, like an improvement of 110 points from my uh, from my very first mock of 585, mm -hmm. and seeing the like the hundred percentile on quant really made me ecstatic because that is where I really focused on uh, doing uh, doing a lot of QC practices, making sure that I don't miss any questions or any details. So mm -hmm. that really made me happy and delighted overall. <laughs> Great, great, great. And I, I, I can clearly understand the excitement, right? Because you had such a great journey. So in your journey, when we look back, when we take a step back, we can clearly see that in verbal, you started with a 60th percentile and improved to a V82 level. Similarly, in quants, you were able to get to that perfect score of a Q90, right? And in mm -hmm. DI as well, a 90th percentile. So uh, reflecting on your journey, when you look back, what was your biggest challenge or hurdle? Um, I guess my biggest challenge or hurdle was uh, the verbal part specifically, especially mm -hmm. the CR part of things, because I was really weak at CR overall. Uh, and what really helped me was going through uh, the EGMAT courses for critical reasoning and also the RC uh, part of the courses going through them diligently, going uh, through all the medium and hard cementing quizzes, uh -huh. achieving that uh, 70 percentile or 70 percent or higher on medium and 55 percentile or higher on uh, the hard cementing quizzes. Uh -huh. That really helped me to understand what I really need to uh, solve uh -huh. in CR questions, how I need to approach it, like the pre-thinking analysis and uh, overall developing a strategy for solving these kinds of questions for purple and for quant i majorly focused on doing a lot of quizzes uh, on scholarium and also going through a lot of questions in the cementing part of the courses mm -hmm. which really helped me to drive that uh, 100 percentile score on quant so in this, we can clearly see that this was your first mock, right? Now, I mm. know that this was a completely raw mock because you were just starting off with your GMAT journey, right? Mm. But yeah. when we see that 585 and when we look into the subsection division, that is a verbal and quants and DI, we can clearly mm. see that there was scope for improvement across the sections at this point. Yeah right when you were starting off right and this led for you to get started with the verbal section because that's the first section that you did in the EGMAT course right so I want to understand how did the course help you change the approach that you were following before mm -hmm. uh, when I gave my very first mock I honestly didn't had like a uh, approach to any kind of question I was mm -hmm. uh, just solely relying on my intuition in a way specifically mm -hmm. for verbal part of things. Uh, but when I did the course on EGMAT website, I went through all the videos and practice quizzes and cementing quizzes religiously. Mm -hmm. uh, that ultimately helped me to develop a very strategic approach to each kind of question. Like mm -hmm. assumption is different, strength and weak and critique. Every kind of question is different. Mm -hmm. And how to read an RC passage, how to maybe develop a strategy to mm -hmm. time the RC passes so you don't lose a lot of time. So all of these things actually helped me to develop like a more strategic approach for overall verbal section as well. Mm -hmm. And on the coin side, it was more around uh, overall solving a lot of questions, practicing and queuing things. So not getting a lot of things wrong. Got it. Got it. I, I think you rightly put, and that's what our intention is, that we want to equip our students with a framework that they can use time and again on each and every question that comes their way. Right. Mm -hmm. in, in CR, you know, because in your initial diagnostic mock, it was a significant weak area. Right. And it was something yeah. that was consistently a weaker area or to a certain extent till your mocks as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so what changes did you make in your CR? Because I, I, you just mentioned about the pre thinking approach. So mm -hmm. could you elaborate more on that? Yeah, um, I can like briefly share about my journey on verbal. 
Mm -hmm. uh, CR part. So basically, uh, I started doing all the, uh, watching all the videos, doing some ending quizzes. So uh, the approach of pre-thinking, assumptions, analysis, and elimination, all of these things were fresh in my mind. But mm -hmm. when I gave my very first official mock, uh, like a three weeks after, mm -hmm. uh, it was like a mix of my intuition and the strategic approach itself. So uh, I actually went back to the courses before uh, like a week or so before mm -hmm. my final exam. And I rewatched all the conceptual videos, uh, relearned all, uh, all the, uh, I guess, the approach to different questions. Mm -hmm. And that actually helped me to hone CR to a way that I actually scored like 100 percentile on CR, which was a really big improvement for from a 40th percentile. Yeah, right. And that's a massive jump, right? Uh, when you're mm -hmm. talking about 100 percentile, it's like a perfect score. There's nothing more than that, right? Mm -hmm. I think the strategy that you applied in your end days, making sure that, you know, you did some focused practice on CR to particularly yeah. fix it before your actual test really did wonders because I think that's very crucial where you where you find out the root cause, where you do the mm -hmm. strategic review and fix those issues. And those corrective measures are something that really helped you improve in your case, right? Yeah. So uh, moving forward to your quant section, uh, Vital, uh, you know, you went very extensively using the scholaranium part of the course, right? And mm -hmm. you've used a good set of questions. Like if I have to really show it to everyone out here, we can clearly see that you've used a good 68% of the questions from the scholaranium bag, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you did a fair share of cementing stage also. That's the stage two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that has to be done. So what value did a cementing stage add to your preparation? Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, since I already had like a mathematics background, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to solve quant questions much faster and solving cementing quizzes and going through scholarium really helped me to make it uh, like my improve overall accuracy, uh, efficiency in a way. Uh, so also, uh, what I really improved while solving the cementing and uh, scholarium questions as well, it was uh, the part of queuing things. So mm -hmm. before that, I was not able to get a lot of time uh, checking if I got all the details correct on the question. So I might have missed a couple of them, which is mm -hmm. why I got the wrong answer in mm -hmm. the official mocks and the previous mocks as well. But when I went through all these quizzes, uh, it actually helped me to understand, to read each and every line, uh, I guess, religiously, not to miss anything. Mm -hmm. And then also to go back uh, to some of the questions on the official mock just to make sure that uh, I mark them correctly. So, yeah, that was yeah. my strategy. In in quants. So yeah. uh, when we talk about, you know, the perfect score, when we talk about a Q90, so what key mm -hmm. scales do you believe are essential for achieving a 100 percentile on quants? Um, I guess timing yourself is really important because mm -hmm. quant is uh, a section somewhere you might require much lesser time than like two minutes per question. For mm -hmm. me, it was like 1.7, 1.6 minutes per question. So on the official exam as well, I completed the section in 35 minutes. I bookmarked like three of the questions mm -hmm. and I went back to th uh, those three questions just to make sure that I solved them correctly. So mm -hmm. timing is one aspect. Uh, definitely, once I mentioned that, uh, queuing things, quality checks is also essential because in quant specifically, there are a lot of traps and wording uh, that a lot of people just miss out on mm -hmm. uh, and read through. So queuing things just to make sure that uh, you got the answer correctly mm. uh, is another one as well. So, yeah. Mm. And you, since you mentioned about bookmarking the questions, right? So mm. uh, since this is very new in the GMAT zone where you can bookmark the questions now, mm. right? So what kind of questions did you bookmark? Uh, were these the questions that you were doubtful about or you did not have time? Uh, what was the mm. category that you were going ahead with? Yeah. So... Uh, the kind of questions I bookmarked were like in between of the section, maybe mm -hmm. like uh, question number 12, 16th and, and 18th. So mm -hmm. I did have like time, but 
I knew that it might require uh, a bit more than like two or three minutes to solve this question. So okay. uh, initially, I gave like a good uh, one and a half minutes to solve the question. Then I marked it with mm-hmm. my best guesstimate, and then moved on. Uh, and I when came back, I solved them uh, thoroughly and got the right answers. There was like a one question which was like one of uh, a mixture of sets, probabilities, permutation, combination, which I found like really hard mm-hmm. in a way. So I took a lot of time, maybe like four or five minutes and mm-hmm. got the right answer. So yeah, it's really important to maybe bookmark some questions that you think are going to take a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So so you don't miss out on the questions ahead of these questions. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So basically the ones that you bookmarked were calculation intensive in yeah, ones, very, very right. Good. The, yeah. the one that you knew that it's going to take some extra time. So you went mm-hmm. ahead, you did the other questions and then you came back. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, it worked out well in your case because we can see that it's a perfect score. Right. So this mm-hmm. strategy really, really worked for you. So uh, yeah. now moving towards DI, right. So uh, I know mm-hmm. that DI is a new, uh, zone when we talk about the GMAT space, right? So Mm -hmm. could you discuss your approach and DI and what were the challenges that you came across or faced? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So in DI, we have like uh, four kinds of questions, tables, uh, graphs and tables, data sufficiency, multi-source reasoning and two-part analysis. For me personally, uh, the graphs and tables were the easiest kinds of question and which is which is where I saved a lot of time. So mm-hmm. for example, on average, it took me like one and a half minutes only to solve a graphs and table question. Mm-hmm. So I saved a lot of time on the official exam doing these questions. And then uh, the time that I saved was ultimately utilized in solving MSR questions and DS questions, which take usually more than like uh, maybe two minutes, 20 seconds, or even like two and a half minutes sometimes. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, my approach was definitely solving uh, graphs and tables first, going through the course, then going to data sufficiency questions, solving mm-hmm. two-part analysis, and then finally arriving like the multi-source reasoning, which is like combination of all these three questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how did you work uh, your way through the DI? Was it that uh, it was something that uh, was naturally in line for you? Or did you first learn the concepts and then you started mm-hmm. working on the practice mode? Yeah, I think it's really essential to do verbal and quant before uh, like preparing for DI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, all the concepts you learn in verbal for critical reasoning and RC are going to be very useful in uh, DI section as well. And for quant, what you learn in algebra, arithmetic are uh, basically like the fundamental concepts used in mm-hmm. DI as well. So it's really essential to do both of these sections before going to DI preparation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also on the official mock, I had the same uh, sequence, first verbal, then quant, then at the last DI. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah so it worked out well for me I wanted to understand uh, you know you got in touch with our support team a few weeks before Mm -hmm. your actual test right Uh, we had uh, often communication over the emails so Mm -hmm. uh, how much impact does a certain kind of guidance or mentorship make in a GMAT preparation zone I think it helps a lot definitely because uh, given uh, I'm working I'm a working professional so I don't get a lot of time thinking about strategizing my approach for the preparation. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, I do have to rely on EGMAT experts for guiding me throughout the way. So once I completed the course, I gave one of the official mocks and I reached out to you uh, mm-hmm. and you gave me like a strategic guide on how to approach uh, preparing for certain sections as well. So that was really helpful and it actually helped me to maybe boost my score in verbal and DI. So Mm -hmm. it was quite helpful in a way. Great, great. And we are glad that we were able to uh, help you out there. Coming to the mocks. uh, So I want to understand what was your perspective about the mocks and how much uh, does taking a mock or sectional tests prepare Mm -hmm. you for the actual test? Yeah, Uh, I think it really helps to develop uh, like the sense of what kinds of questions are going to be there, what is going to be structure of the overall exam. So definitely recommend uh, people to take uh, at least like the couple of free official mocks. And if you can, then also take like 
a couple of extra ones because it's ultimately going to help you develop like a, uh, a strategy for how to go about each section and mm-hmm. also develop a habit of sitting down for two and a half hours uh, mm-hmm. preparing for exams. So yeah, it really helps in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I think very well put because I think the acclimatization, right, uh, that you need to mm-hmm. set for the two and a half hours is very, very crucial because sometimes it can be very tedious and burning also. Right? If yeah, you have yeah. not taken a couple of mocks before the actual test, sometimes the stress takes over or, you know, you tend mm-hmm. to feel tired after a point because it, it's at a stretch that you are sitting for the test. So I, I, I completely agree with you regarding your actual test. So what was it like and how did you, you know, manage your pressure during the actual test? So could you walk us through your experience mm-hmm. of your GMAT? Yeah. Uh, of course. So I gave official exam in a test center. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, I, I feel like the official exam was like a tad bit difficult than official mocks that we have on uh, eGMAT. Sorry, uh, like the official GMAT. MBA.com uh, mocks, mocks yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was a tad bit difficult, but not too much. So uh, I first took verbal. Uh, I solved like a couple of CR questions and I actually felt the pressure of the exam uh, mm-hmm. as well. So somehow I managed to calm down my nerves as well. Uh, then went through the verbal section. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I put quant section in the second because uh, I felt like I need to be in that flow state of not missing anything in mm-hmm. exam. So yeah, since my quant was uh, the best, uh, like the well-performing section, I put it in the second one. Uh, and for the verbal, which was my sort of the weakest part, I needed a lot of thinking and decision making capabilities. So I put it in the first one and ultimately DI was sort of in the middle. So which mm-hmm. is why it was the last after the break. So yeah, Got overall it. experience was quite well. Yeah. For the exam. So the sequence that you followed was verbal, quant and DI. And when did you take the yeah. break? After the two sections, is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is, there, is this the same uh, habit that you were following during your mm-hmm. mocks also? Yeah, I think it's essential to follow like the same sequence of Mm -hmm. the section and the breaks as well. So Mm -hmm. you develop a habit in a way. Uh, Avital, when you look back at your journey, right? So what would be Mm -hmm. that key takeaways that you would like to share with the other GMAT aspirants? Um, I guess the first one is definitely uh, honing through eGMAT course in a way, honing your weak areas not missing out on the stronger areas as well, practice them religiously. And the cementing quiz has really helped me a lot. So I think everyone should do the cementing part and also follow like the scholarium practice test because they are also really useful in a way. Give a lot of mocks, maybe a couple of them at Mm -hmm. least. Uh, If you have time, then you can go for like four or five mocks as well. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. 